everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Erica. Actually, I've seen in the last few videos that quite a few of you have come from Morgan's channel since she shared me over there, which is so sweet of her, and I'm so happy you're here. For today, I'm going to go over my 2023 favorites of things that I knit. I was thinking about doing a video where I showed everything I knit in 2023, but then I thought it would be more interesting to go over my favorites, so things I actually wear the most and that I would knit again instead of just everything I made. And then after that, I want to show you what else I've been working on and a few acquisitions, some yarny gifts that I got for Christmas. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. I might be looking down every now and then. I have my little notebook so I don't forget what I want to share with all of you. So the first pattern and item that is like definitely my number one favorite of the year is the port sweater by Ozetta. So I have it right here. It's so comfortable. It's very oversized. I knit it one or two sizes. I can't remember. Larger than what would be like my recommended size because I wanted it to be super comfy and long enough that I could wear with leggings and not feel like uncomfortable if my butt was showing. So it covers my butt. And I decided to knit it striped. Her original pattern is just for a solid color. So I figured out the stripes to help them match up with the body and the sleeves. And the only other change I made to the pattern was hers is a mock neck, but I don't always love the look of a mock neck or the feeling of like fabric tight on my neck. So I decided to just knit it double like the length or the length of the mock neck and then I folded it down and sewed it so it's just like a double folded collar and I knit this up with two different colors as you can see this one is I can't remember the name I'll put it on the screen and then this yarn is super cool it came from my local farm farmer's market from a sheep farmer who shears the sheep and spins it into yarn and this is like the natural gray sheep so it's not dyed and I love this I'm happy I have some left over I don't know what I'm gonna make with it but I want to make something else so this sweater I made back in the end of April early May and I finished it right before I went on my honeymoon and that was before I started posting on YouTube so I'm not sure if you all have seen this yet but I have worn it, well, wore it a ton on my honeymoon. It was perfect for like travel days, throwing on, whatnot, but then I didn't wear it all summer, obviously, but once it got cold enough again, I swear I've worn it like at least once a week or every other week, and definitely my most worn sweater. So I want to make another one eventually, and I think I'll make it in like my proper size, the recommended size. For my measurements and just in a solid color i also love this the detailing at the arm so you do like pearls and knits so you get this nice rib texture and then you pick up the arm underneath so i feel like that's a nice extra little detail that makes it more special but yeah this is definitely my most worn knit of 2023 the next pattern that is definitely my most worn and I can't wait to make another one of. That is a good indicator too of these. If I actually want to make a second or third one of the pattern then I know it's definitely one of my favorites. So this I want to make a second of and it is the Seasons Socks by Summerlee Knits. I made these back in November so not too long ago but I have worn them a ton. These are knit up with the Patton's Croy Sock Yarn and the color is called Mossy Colors. So it's a beautiful green with mossy colors, some brown and gray flecks, and I have worn these so much. I really like the texture. It's like a waffle knit texture, and a heel flap and gusset, which is my favorite heel construction for how it fits on my foot. And I don't know, I don't know if it's the texture of the sock or what, but I just love the way they feel when I'm wearing them. And they're not too thick to wear in shoes. And yeah, I want to make another pair. 
The knitted waffle texture of these kind of reminds me of the tessellated socks or totally tessellated. Everyone's been making them and with the color changing yarn in this a little bit reminds me of that. So it makes me want to make those too, which hopefully I will next year. But yeah, I definitely want to make another pair of these, maybe in a solid color instead of like this slightly self striping yarn. But I have worn these multiple times a week since I finished them back in November. My next favorite I'm actually wearing right now, so let me take it off. It is another pair of socks. These are the Sunday Socks by Petite Knit. I'm sure many of you have seen these. It's a really popular pattern. I made these back in March and I made a matching pair for my wife, Serena, and we wore them on a camping trip for my birthday. And it was really cold then, so it was perfect, but then of course it warmed up summer stopped wearing them but ever since it got cold again i have worn these almost every weekday which kind of sounds gross i am washing them but while i'm working because my feet get so cold if i'm just sitting around the house so i wear these a lot while i'm working in my slippers and they're just great also these are knit in the sennes garn perfect yarn and it's super wash which i normally don't love knitting with superwash like the feeling of it but this didn't bother me too much to knit with and I do love that you can put them in the washing machine full transparency I have washed and dried these probably not a hundred not a hundred times I don't know I've washed and dried them a lot after every few wears I wash and dry them and they're holding up really well so I want to make more of these oh and the color of this is called 1042 it's just like a heathery gray but I have made I've worn these a ton one of them the other one on my other foot I have a hole in it that I need to mend but it's because I'm wearing it so much and maybe it's because I've been putting it in the washer and dryer but who knows and it's just easier that way sometimes you know okay the next knitted item that would be in my favorites is the August hat by Sari Nordland. This was the first cabled hat I had ever knit and her pattern was super easy to follow. I also love this yarn color. It's like a purpley pink mauve color. It is the Blue Sky Fibers Woolstock Worsted in the color Lilac Bloom. So I originally chose this color because I follow APT Atelier on Instagram and on YouTube. Her name's Anna and she made this hat in a very similar color but she had hand dyed hers with blackberries I want to say I think and so I was trying to match the color as best as I could when I was looking online so they match pretty well. I'll insert a picture of hers. Super comfortable beanie. I have a really big head and this fits nicely and I don't feel like it makes my head look even bigger so that's a plus and I just love the cables of it and I would make one again I think a really uh, green one a dark green would be really pretty or maybe tan I want to get back into making beanies last year I made in 2022 I made a lot of beanies and then this year this is the only one I've made and I have quite a few that I want to make so maybe I'll make a second one of these when I get back into knitting beanies Okay, I have two more favorites that I want to go over for knits, and then I'll talk about a couple other favorites. The next one is also a sweater. This is the Thin Sweater by Wool and & Beyond, and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous knit. She designed this pattern so well, and it's very easy to follow. So it has a small little... X detail at the top in the center oh there you can see it in the center of the neckline and I love 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 that detail and then it is a saddle shoulder construction you can't see it it's hard to see with the charcoal yarn um a saddle shoulder construction which was my first time this was my first time knitting a saddle shoulder and I love the way it fits it just sometimes I feel like raglans pull too much when you're wearing them 
but I do like knitting them because it's so fun. It's in the round, it's easy, but this was just as easy as knitting a raglan and this fits so much better on my shoulder. Now, I will say this was not my favorite thing to knit because it's knit on three millimeter needles with fingering weight yarn, so it takes forever. This took me quite a long time to finish, but now that I have it, it's like the best. You can just see how drapey it is and cozy and the arms are quite thin. She has you do a lot of decreases. It is supposed to be tight on your wrist by the end of the decreases, but I didn't want mine that tight. So once I got to the elbow, I just knit straight instead of continuing decreasing all the way till my wrist. But I do appreciate the thinner sleeve because basically every other sweater I knit, the, I always choose ones with wide sleeves and they don't always fit the best in coats and jackets. So this one fits really well under a coat. But I definitely want to make more patterns from Wool and Beyond. She makes such unique pieces and I just love her patterns because this is the second thing I've knit from her and her directions are great. She has such cool patterns. I actually do have one of her beanie patterns. I think I already purchased it or I saved it on Ravelry, one of the two, and I really want to make it. So that will be one of the beanies that I knit when I get back into making beanies. My last favorite is a colorwork one. So I knit quite a few colorwork socks this year. Strawberries, bats, pumpkins, and Christmas. So my favorite ones are my Christmas colorwork socks. I made these with a bunch of colors of West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4 Ply. So I have all the colors written down here and I'll put them down below too. So we have the self-striping is the color gingerbread. The actual gingerbread is called amber. The red is rouge. And then for the white, I used some leftover um, Issei or sock yarn in white. But I am in love with these. I think these are my favorite socks I've made all year and then my favorite color work ones for sure. These are from a pattern called the Christmas Treat Socks and that includes the whole sock is color work. So candy canes, snowflakes, I think, gingerbread, trees, Christmas trees, I think. Um, but I just took out the gingerbread and knit this cuff in the middle with the gingerbread and then used the self striping yarn for the rest and then used red for the toe and the heel. I made four of these. So I have a pair and Serena has a pair. It took me quite a while. And this, oh my gosh, this is all I had left at the end of the self striping yarn. So this is basically one stripe each, one green stripe, one brown and one red. That is all I had left at the end of making these, I was so nervous that I was gonna run out and I was like, I can't buy more of this yarn just for like a teeny bit. So I was preparing that one of them would have a toe that was like super long start back here, but I was able to finish all four. So that was worth it that that one ball of yarn got me four socks, which is all the striped here and here. So definitely worth it but I was so nervous I was gonna run out these are my absolute favorite socks that I have knit this year and I think next year I want to take other portions of the chart to make some the candy canes are super cute because they're two candy canes together and it looks like a heart so I think I want to do that next year like similar style where I knit most of it and then just do the color work like right here around the top of the leg I don't know if I want to do full color work sock with all the Christmas stuff, so we'll see. Those are all my favorite knits of the year and my most worn knits. I want to mention a couple of my favorite designers. The first one is Milena Paulina on Instagram. I test knit the Cleo sweater for her back in September and it was just such a great experience that I'm actually test knitting something else for her right now, which I'll show you in a minute. But she's just so great. It's been nice getting to know her as we're working on the test knit. And her designs are chef's kiss. Her directions are incredible. She just writes everything so precisely. 
and very easy to follow that I think I'll keep making her patterns a ton in the future. She actually has a beanie I want to make. Another beanie. I need to start making beanies. Um, yeah, I'll continue even when I'm not test knitting to support her because she just is the best. And the second designer is Wool and Beyond, who is the creator of the thin sweater. She makes such cool designs. I really want to make the shell shirt. So I was thinking that might be a good spring shirt to make. Spring, summer, we'll see. I don't love summer knits. I much prefer all the woolly wools than knitting with like linen and cotton and stuff. I think the shell shirt is knit with silk alpaca yarn, I think is what she recommends. So that might be a good spring summer shirt we'll see but she's my second favorite artist of the year or knitwear designer of the year i found her at the beginning of 2023 and just enjoy following her on instagram i really like all her designs she knit a dress for a wedding so that was really cool to follow along she i think it was a friend's wedding and she literally knit her entire dress and like little shawl to wear over it for the wedding so that's really cool to follow. You'll have to look at her Instagram. I think she had like reels going over how she was making that. So super cool. I love following her. Um, my favorite yarns that I've tried this year. First one is Isair Sock Yarn, which I think I have some. So I have this little bit left of this ball of some Isair Sock Yarn. And it is the softest and the sturdiest sock yarn I have used this year. Somehow it's super soft, but it doesn't like fall apart or anything. So I have a couple more balls of this in green, pink, white, and I have the intention of making some colorwork socks with those. So I might just have to do that. I wanted to make the tulip socks by Stone Knits. It's on the cover of her book. I'll put it in a picture. So I got some greens and pinks for that. I also think white could be kind of cute mixed in there so stay tuned and then my other favorite new yarn new to me yarn that I tried is the Majo Tweed Supreme so this is 100% merino wool and a beautiful green tweed and this was the yarn that I used for the Clio sweater for Milana's test knit and it's so incredibly soft and I also just love the color with the flex in it there's some gold and brown it's just so so beautiful so since i have some left over from the test knit i think i'm gonna make a beanie okay i am talking about beanies i need to just make them but i want to make the i think it's called the sailor hat from sorry nordland and it's a really pretty beanie so i think i'm going to use my leftovers of this for that my last favorite that i want to go over before I show you what else I've been working on is not knitting related, but it kind of is. It's my favorite audiobooks that I've enjoyed this year. So I love to read, read audiobooks. No, I love to listen to audiobooks while I'm knitting since I can't read at the same time and knit. Um, and something new to me is graphic audiobooks. So I heard about it and I thought that sounds like it'll either be really cringe or I'll enjoy it a lot. And surprise, I enjoy them a lot. So basically it's like there's actors playing each character. So anytime someone's speaking in the book, it's a different voice playing that character. And then there's like music in the background or if there's like a fighting scene, they'll make like sword clashing sounds and then the narrator is consistent throughout the book. So I truly thought it was going to be kind of cringe, but I actually really liked it. And the two books that I enjoyed on graphic audio were A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Silver Flames. So I started re-listening to all of Sarah J. Mass's books because her new one comes out in January and I cannot wait. Right now I am listening to Crescent City 2 to get ready for Crescent City 3 to come out. They don't have that in graphic audio, so I'm just listening to the normal audiobook, but it's still really good. Let me know if you've ever listened to any other graphic audiobooks. I think Harry Potter would be really good if they have graphic audio. I haven't looked into any others, but something with like very distinct 
recognizable characters I think would be really good. Those are all of my favorites for 2023. I thought I would go into what I have been working on slash finished up and then go over a couple of yarny gifts. So current things that I have finished recently from previous videos. The first one is the Yoon sweater by November Knits. This is a beautiful raglan and it has two by two ribbing and that two by two ribbing goes into the raglan, which I love. And then a really long ribbed cuff. And the main thing that drew me to this is the super long ribbed split hem. So it splits right there on the side and it's so, so beautiful. I knit this whole thing to pattern, except I did two extra raglan increases. So you'll do the raglan increase row, then knit a regular row, then another raglan increase. So I basically did four extra rows that I didn't need to. Um, the raglan is quite deep, but I really don't like when sweaters are like up tight in my armpit. I'd rather it be really loose. So as I was trying it on while I was knitting it, I decided to add two extra rows to make it a little bit deeper because I really don't like when stuff's like all the way up in my armpit. It feels suffocating, but this is so beautiful. I love the color. Directions, easy to follow. I knit this up pretty quickly. Um, in between other projects because I was really wanting to just knit mindlessly in the round and that's exactly what that did until we got to the bottom but it satisfied that craving of wanting to just knit in the round knit and knit and knit and knit and stock in it in the round okay last time we talked I think I showed you the Victoria scarf that I was gift knitting I don't have it anymore I'll put it in a picture because I gave it to my yoga teacher. And that is a great gift knit because you don't need to know the size of someone's head or the size of their feet, like for socks or a hat. You don't need to know the size of their hand if you wanna make them mittens. It's just an easy little scarf. Um, so I would definitely recommend that as a knit if you're making it for someone where you don't know their sizes. Okay, the last, oh, another gift knit. I haven't showed these to you because these were for Serena, so I wanted to give them to you, <laughs> give them to her before I showed you. And I made her some mittens. These are the Arched Gusset Mittens by Pearl Soho. This is a free pattern on the Pearl Soho website. And theirs is just knit and stock knit all the way to the cuff. So for theirs, you would start basically no cuff and then knit the mitten. But I decided to add this two by two cuff at the bottom and then Serena can decide if she wants to wear them like this, like a shorter mitten, or if it's really cold and you wanna tuck your sleeves in to your mittens or vice versa, get your mitten under your sleeve. I made it extra long with the cuff down here. So otherwise I knit the whole thing to pattern, but I just made that one adjustment to make them nice and long. I have the other one here. These are so cute. I kind of want to make some for myself now. I knit these up with some yarn that I got on our honeymoon while we were in the Cotswolds and it was from a local farmer. It's just a DK weight like the natural gray of the sheep. So these were a good gift knit and this is what I mean knowing the size of someone's hands. We have similar sized hands so I just kept trying them on as I was making them to make sure that they would fit. But if you didn't know someone's hands, you don't want to make them too small because then like they'll have to, you know, it won't fit. I would make these again for someone for sure. And next time that someone will be me. <laughs> that leads me to what I am currently working on. And the first thing is a pair of Sunday socks. So as I raved about them, just before this, I am actually knitting myself a second pair of the Sunday socks. And this is by Petite Knit. And this is just some stash yarn I had. I can't remember what it is, but it's just a pretty tan color. And I'm almost done with this one. So I will have a second pair of these very, very soon. 
The last thing that I'm working on is the test knit for Melena. This is the Wabi Sabi cardigan. And it has wide sleeves with these really beautiful lateral braids across the whole cardigan. And right now, let's see, I am on the second sleeve. So I just have the second sleeve and then the button band to finish. And I'm hoping, okay, so today is the 29th. So I'm really hoping I can finish this and these socks by the first and then I'll just like, or the 31st, I guess. And then I can start new year, clean slate and just start knitting whatever. Honestly, it won't really matter if I don't finish them, but I think it would be really fun to just start completely fresh where I'm done with all of my projects from 2023 at the new year. So I think I can do it. I'm ha about halfway done, almost halfway done with the second sleeve, and then I just have to do the button band. Um, this is my first time knitting a cardigan, so I've never done a button band. So that might hold me up from finishing it by the 31st or the first, but we'll see. It's been a delight to work on. I really like testing patterns for her. Also, we are knitting this up in the BC Garn Hamilton Tweed 2. And the color of mine is color three. It doesn't have a name on here. It's a really pretty tweed yarn. I went for the gray color and then it has flecks of like orangey brown and dark brown and white in it. Also, Milena is the best because she is working with BC Garn on this. So we actually got our yarn gifted to us to work on the test knit, which I think is absolutely incredible, especially for sizes. Like as sizes get larger to pattern test, you have to pay for that yarn and it can be really expensive. So it's incredible that every single person, no matter what size they were making for the test knit, um, got their yarn gifted to them. And that just makes doing test knits even more doable. And I really, really, I'm so grateful for her that she was able to figure that out. Also for the Clio sweater, when I test knit that for her, she got us a discount from Majo Yarn to purchase the yarn for this. So I just think that's really, really great as a designer that she's able to do that and to help out her test knitters as we work on it for her. So for the buttons, I think I'm going to do like those shell, mother of pearl shell looking buttons. I ordered some online because I couldn't find any that I loved nearby, like my local craft store or knitting store. So hopefully those are cute and they go well with this. Um, if not, maybe wood buttons would be cute, but I'm hoping those shell pearl buttons will work out. The test knit is going to be done at the end of January, so I think the pattern will come out end of January, early February. So when it's out, I'll link it down below. But for now, definitely follow Milena on Instagram. She is the best. The last things I want to share with you are a few yarny knitting gifts that I received from family for Christmas. The first one is from Serena. She got me this beautiful green yarn and it's the Sennis Garn Perfect Yarn and it's so I can make more Sunday socks. So I think I will honestly cast on another pair after I finish that tan pair and I'm thinking I'll use about two balls of yarn for it maybe a little more but then I have some of this gray left over from the gray ones I showed you earlier and these would be really cute striped together or contrast toe heel there's no cuff on this but I could do a contrast cuff um so then I'd have four pairs of those socks which would be amazing so I might do that use these first and then pair the last green with the leftover gray she also kindly got me a couple of these sweater care washing bags from Coco Knits and sometimes I do throw my sweaters in the wash but now I can put them in these bags including socks that I put in the wash and they won't get messed up so I'm really excited to use these. My family does Secret Santa for the adult children, so we all get one of our siblings, and my sister-in-law got me, and she got me these lovely knit blockers. 
I have some of like the individual pins, but I feel like this is really nice that it's just the big, the big rectangle with like seven or eight pins in one. So excited to use these. I can use these when I finish my cardigan and block them with it. She also got me this stitch dictionary book, which is so cool. It has 200 knitting designs in here. So I've flipped through it a little bit. Let's see what else. There's just so many cool ones. Oh, I love these little hearts. So there's so many cool designs in here. And then at the end of the book, there's a few patterns. Like there's a sweater pattern and a cowl. So I think you could sub the stitch patterns like from this cowl for any of the ones in the book. And there's also sweaters. And it just looks really cool. I have never like designed color work anything on my own, but I'm thinking maybe this year I'll try to do a cowl with one of these stitch, stitches, patterns, I don't know, or do a pair of socks. So those little hearts are cute. Like those would be really cute for Valentine's Day. Let's see what else is in here. Oh, this is a beautiful snowflake. Let's see, can you see it? <laughs> The snowflake would be super cute too for some Christmassy wintry socks. So I'll have to look through here and flag the pages on the ones that I'm like super excited about and then go ahead and figure out what I want to knit with those. So that was super sweet of her. She also got me a gift card to get some yarn. I already ordered it because I can't wait. So it was a wool in the gang gift card and I decided to get their their DK weight alpaca yarn and I'm going to use it to make a hot water bottle cover. I've been seeing so many of them on Instagram. Laura Penrose came out with a new pattern, a color work pattern for a hot water bottle cover and I can't stop looking at everybody so now I want to make one and I don't have a hot water bottle so I'm gonna get one. I've never used one before um so I don't know how much I'll use it but it's just one of those things that I've been thinking about for a very long time so I need to knit one. So I'm going to use the yarn from her gift card to make that. And I just got white because I'm predictable. <laughs> and the last thing, my parents got me such a sweet gift. It's the Chiaogu little shorty twist, I think it's called. And these are size four, US size four to US size eight or 3.5 millimeter to 5 millimeter. So they're all the little short ones that you can put on short circulars to make socks. So little. I'll probably use these to knit socks. I also want to use them to knit sleeves in the future. Um, I have the smaller version of this where it's like 2 millimeter to 3.25 millimeter. I have those needles and I actually used the small circulars of the 3 millimeters um to knit up this sleeve and it was so nice that I want to be able to do that going forward it was much better than doing magic loop because I don't really like doing magic loop so that is why I asked for those for Christmas if they could get them and they did which is so nice that is everything that I have for you today I hope you're enjoying the holidays and you have a happy new year I am trying to decide if I should make a video about everything I want to knit in 2024 or not. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. I also could just read them off really quickly right now. I have such a long list already. I also started writing what yarn I want to knit them in and what color because some of them I have the yarn already in my stash but others I'll need to purchase. So I think I'll just mention a few of them. The next thing I'm going to cast on at the beginning of the year is the Guernsey Genser. I feel like I've been talking about this for the past six months. That's what was supposed to come next after I finished the Yoon sweater, but then I signed up for the test knit, so I pushed it off again. I already have the yarn in here, so I need to make it. 
that's going to be the first sweater I cast on for the year. Um, I also already have yarn to make ribbed sleeves by Wool and Beyond. I have the pattern already too. So that will be close to the beginning of the year. I really want to make hot water bottle cover. I want to make the braided beanie by Wool and Beyond. I already have the yarn for that. Let's see. Those are the ones I'm thinking of doing first thing at the beginning of the year. The sailor beanie with this leftover. Let's see. Oh, I really this year want to make sweater number 15. I feel like everyone has made it. I look at pictures of it on Ravelry all the time. I look at the hashtag all the time on Instagram, but there's so many that I can't decide what color. I'm thinking green, but then I'm like, what color green? Olive green? Dark green? Lime green? Because Inga from Knitting Traditions made the Guernsey Genser in a lime green and it's so pretty. So I'm like, maybe I do sweater number 15 in a lime green. Or maybe I just do it in brown. Or maybe I do it in white. I I cannot decide. Okay, what else do I want to make towards the beginning of the year? Oh, split personality mittens. Okay, I really want to make those. And she made them with Let Low Be. And I have some right over there. <laughs> so that I want to make at the beginning of the year too. And if I end up not feeling like doing color work mittens, I might make a pair of... The Pearl Soho mittens that I just showed you for myself. But we'll see. Those split personality mittens look so cute. They have like a snowflake on this side and then gingham on the other side. But you, I think you can wear them either way, which is so cute. I even think it would be cute just to do one side of the color work, like maybe do the snowflake and then not do the other side. So we'll see. If I don't feel like making color work, mittens, then I'll probably just make these for myself. Those are just the few ones that I want to make at the beginning of the year. I have the list I have so far, I think I counted the other day and it was like 25 patterns. So kind of a lot, but I do want to make all of them eventually. I want to try and make some summer knits next year. I have some linen yarn and a pattern for it and I planned on making it last year, but then I just never got around to it. So maybe this year. I will actually knit summery things. Last summer I just continued knitting with wool and then when I would get too sweaty I would just take a break or I'd knit socks or something really small. But that's why this also took me so long. I started knitting it in the summer and it was just way too hot so then I didn't finish it until September or October. I can't remember when I finished it but I originally started this like back in June or July so it took quite a while. That is everything. Let me know what your favorite thing is that you knit this year down below. Also, please tell me if you've listened to graphic audio and any other books that you recommend because it is so freaking good listening to all the actors. I can't believe it. And I hope you have a really happy new year and I can't wait to see you next time. And I can't wait to see you. I almost said next year and next time. So I said next time. I can't wait to see you next time and next year. Thanks for watching.